So, hi everybody. Uh, today we're going to look at a great reel for the C-sharp deep box. It's Toss the Feathers, one of the many uh, different settings of Toss the Feathers, but a common one that is in the key of E. Uh, your guitarist will say it's in E minor. Uh, in fact, it's not E minor, it's not even E Dorian, but it's E pentatonic, I guess we could say. And we'll look at uh, why it's pentatonic, how it's pentatonic, what notes we miss out, of course, as we break the tune down. In a later clip, I hope to show you how you can attempt the kind of power chord basses that Tony McMahon plays in that famous clip, which I will direct you to. Um, but in the meantime, today, we're just going to concentrate on the melody. <laughs> So here's the fingering for the first part. In this uh, first phrase, we're alternating between, in this whole first part, in fact, we're alternating between the tonic E and the fifth B. In fact, B probably gets most of the attention. So uh, to play these long Bs, I'm playing it three. I'm playing the B three times. Like that. Except I'm using two fingers to do it. So I start on my uh, middle finger and I end on my middle finger. Make them as smooth as possible, not. good enough. Uh, there are lots of other things you could do on those Bs. Um, we'll stick with this for now. And if you want, you could throw in a grace note using your uh, ring finger to grace the second note. A bit of extra interest. So the first phrase... This last B leads us into... Now, on this uh, long E, we could do the same using two fingers to play the E three times, which works fine, or with the grace note, or using a treble. Anyway, it's fine. So, so far we have... Sometimes I like to doll it up a bit by repeating the A. Or you could play or you could do a pause. Anyway, so, so far we have Then we repeat. 
repeat exactly the same phrase. If you wanted, you could, instead of ending on the F sharp there, you could end on the A. Sorry, go back to the D, sorry. Because that leads us onto the second part. I think we'll do that. So the whole first part. Now, if you you might have noticed that in that um, first part, there's quite a few notes that we don't play. We don't play any G's, and we don't play any C's either. So the tune is uh, essentially pentatonic, uh, and that gives it uh, its nice, open, universal flavour. Um, we'll try and stick to that in the second part. We might throw in a G here and there, maybe in the melody and maybe in the chordal accompaniment when we get to that. But basically we try to respect this uh, pentatonic melody unless we have a good reason not to. Um, so we finish the first part on D, second part. The two E's, I'm gracing the second one with the uh, outer row F sharp here. It's convenient. And it avoids using the G, which is possibly out of key, although you wouldn't really notice it. So use either one you like. That's with the G or the F sharp. Uh, each has a slightly different character, um, so choose the one you like. Next phrase. Now get into position to play this phrase here all on the pull with outer row F sharp. So that's F sharp E B. And it fits into the tune like this. So far, the second part sounds like this. Carrying on, again. This changes. Second part of the second part. And a little coda here. Emphasize that high B with the octave. 
We could put more notes in. Well, that's uh, G, so we don't like that so much. It sounds weird. But that, if you play the F sharp there, that's going to affect the, your choice of chord. So probably best to stick to a big long B. And on the little coda, sometimes we can throw in a G to as a little surprise. does have an element of surprise because it's the first time we've heard the note G. And then we're back to the beginning. So the whole second part. I'll do it again because I fluffed it. That's the melody of Toss the Feathers. We'll look at the bass in another clip, which I hope to get around to doing soon. In the meantime, good luck with the tune. Thanks for listening, as always, and see you around.